Hey guys, so um, I'm going to be going over how I would recommend you do the uh, milestone for this week. Um, with that in mind, um, I want to kind of talk about what to avoid first before I let you guys get started. So um, I have a couple examples here. What you're going to be doing is you're going to be copying a logo. Um, and there's a couple things you want to avoid because it's just going to be a pain to do. So for example, this one right here, that's pretty much all text. You want to avoid logos like these because um, you're basically just doing a font. Um, and then this little thing is going to be a nightmare. Um, so avoid kind of text only logos. Additionally, avoid ones that have tons of weird curvy shapes and gradients like that. Um, this is just going to be trouble for you as well. Um, similarly, avoid ones with just tons of detail. You could probably spend two or three hours getting all the stuff here. Um, and then finally, avoid doing ones that just have a whole bunch of really small text and things. Um, you're going to just want to avoid that. Okay, um, I'm going to switch back and come back with the logo I'm going to work on. Okay, so um, this is the logo that I was going to work with. Um, it does have some fun stuff going on here. Um, this is something I'm comfortable working on, and you are welcome to kind of either watch my progress, follow along, or just do it at you know fairly high speed. Um, so if I was going to copy this logo, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select it right here, and I'm going to go to Object, Lock Selection, um, and that's going to let me be able to kind of just kind of click on everything here and not accidentally move it around um, so that I can keep it in the same spot. Um, I'm going to start, because the main defining thing is this circle, I'm going to start working here. And so I'm just going to click and drag in the center there. I'm going to pull this out till it's about the right size and I can just kind of wiggle it around and see oh, that um, I'm pretty well lined up and I'm going to nudge it with the arrow keys there a little bit too. Um, Next, I'm going to come around to a couple points, and I'm just going to add in um, with the plus key using the anchor point plus. I'm going to add in some points here where this meets so that I can come back and just do a drag out like that. Um, and I'm going to do kind of, I'm going to pull it out first, and then I'll come back, and I'm going to do a whole bunch of these all at once. Um, so I'll just do all these, put that there. Um, and then something else is I'm going to do half of this. So I'll show you guys how I do that um, in just a minute here. Um, just to save myself a little time because that's what we're here for. Um, so I'm going to pull these out. Um, I'm going to switch to that anchor point tool right here. The uh, And I'm just going to click on these points um, to make them sharp. And then um, this side of it I'm going to grab and I'm going to pull this in. And this is coming actually, this is going too fast, probably. Um, so I'm ending up kind of with some shapes there that I like. Um, if I'm not happy, like, see how this one right here, um, it kind of, I don't know, I feel like it just kind of goes a little bit too quick in the direction. So I'm actually just going to reshape this um, by redrawing it. Um, and I'm just going to kind of go through and just retweak some of these to be more what I um, just to kind of smooth out some of these lines. Um, and I'm just going to do that here. Um, the other thing that's going to be kind of hard to deal with on this is going to be these parts. So I might actually come back a little bit further on these. I'll place a new point there and I'll delete this one. Um, and then I'll just use the tool right here to kind of smooth Actually, I want to leave that there, and I just want to smooth this out. And I'm trying to keep, because I'm just modifying this one side of it, I'm just trying to keep it aligned with this, but go out straight in the opposite direction. So, go to right about there. Um, and then I'll do the same thing to this side. Um, this one's a little bit better. I'm just going to bring it down. Right there. Actually, I'll bring this up a little bit. Um, and I'm pretty happy with that. And then obviously, we have these little teardrops. Um, again, what I'll do is I'll just draw one. And then to save myself a little bit of time, because they do kind of look, or at least some of them look similar. Um, ugh. Go away. Um, I'm going to rotate this so that it's. Uh, so that one of the points is lined up approximately going that way. And then I'll just 
drag, come on. I'll just drag that anchor point out. Um, and then um, I'll go to this other one over here. Same thing, I'll just rotate this, pull that point out. And rotate this and pull that point out. Oh, keep missing it. Little tiny points. Okay. So, um, uh, this one could probably be a little bit wider, it looks like. And I'm going to rotate it just a tiny bit. Pull this out. Probably right there. Um, this one could probably be wider too. And pull that out a little bit. So um, very quickly that got me this half of it. Now, as far as doing the opposite, I don't want to have to redraw, take the time to redraw all of this over here. And because it is looking, oh, it's not, it's four of them, huh? Um, well, hey, who knows? Uh, then I guess I will just do this side as well, the normal boring way. Um, I was, well, let me show you how I would do it, because um, sometimes some of you might end up with one that's basically um, parallel. So what I would do is I would delete that point right there. Um, that leaves me with this bottom half, and then I would copy, paste, and then transform, reflect, um, and if I do vertical and then reflect again, horizontal, I end up with it facing the opposite direction. And if we're lucky, but we're not, um, then you would be able to see that these would all line up, which they do not. So um, if they did, I'd be able to get off pretty easy here just by uh, um, lining this up exactly on that point. Just let the snapping tools do their work. And then a direct se selection tool, control J to join, control J to join. And um, then I would be able to have this, uh, it's kind of hard to see there actually, I guess. Then I have that as one solid piece, whereas before it was kind of split in it too. You can see the two centers right there. Um, but it is not, so I'll just continue drawing on here. So I'll grab this point, oops, wrong tool. So, um, the one you guys choose for is individually going to be different for each of you. So how you guys, what logo you choose and how you solve it is going to be kind of different. Um, you might need to flag me down and I can give you some suggestions on uh, what tools you would want to use. Um, but for the most part, it's you'll probably end up doing kind of a lot of what I'm doing right here um, is just kind of well, the way I would probably recommend it is just using a couple of these existing tools and cycling through them and doing different little modifications in order to create the logo. So, um, don't really want to have you guys just have to sit here and listen to me do this for the next couple minutes, but, um, <laughs> surprise! So anyway, uh, if you want to put YouTube on like 3 or 4x speed right now, feel free to. And um, I'm just going to jam with no commentary um, as I go. And then uh, once I'm done, you'll notice when I'm done um, is when I'll zoom out and I'll start recoloring this. So, yeah.
Okay, so hopefully everyone um, is out of fast forward mode right now. Um, so I have all these different little trunks right here. I'm going to go ahead and select these. I'm going to choose, well, we could do group. Um, something else we could do is Pathfinder and just do a union, and that will actually make all of these part of the same thing right there. Um, so the next thing we have is this C. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move this to back. So um, object, trans, uh, range, and we're going to do send to back. So I can see the, um, the logo here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and do this the lazy way. And by lazy way, I mean I'm going to see if I can do a fun... Um, a little shortcut using this tool right here because that C looks incredibly parallel. So I'm just going to bump this to right about there and then I'm going to do a object path offset path. We will do rounded and we'll take the offset down to right about there. This was not great because I actually have a fill on still. Um, so let's kill the fill. Kill the fill. Um, and that created that right here. So here's what I just, here's these off, the offset I just created. And it looks like if I shrink this down, no, let me throw a stroke. So I'm just going to kind of throw a stroke on this. Um, and if I do a white stroke, and then we bump this stroke out. Where's my stroke tool? Oh, always hiding behind. Okay, so if I bump this stroke out, I was right. I got lucky. Um, that exactly fits. So now I can go to object, path, outline stroke. Um, and if I hit control Y, we'll switch over here. And we can see what I've got going on. Um, if I begin to, let's see, what's what in here? Release compound path. Um, I should end up with just that part right there. So now I can select the part in the back. I can move both of these to the front. Um, I would hit Control Shift and then the right bracket on my keyboard. But for you guys, um, object transform or actually object arrange, bring to front, um, and you can see that I've got those two right there. So what I'm going to do is I will subtract this um and oh, let's apparently we didn't get um so actually let me ungroup those i'll subtract this from that and then we'll regroup them um, just so that that part doesn't get mad so we'll group it um and then the next thing that we have to deal with is um the colors so you can see right there that it goes from that orange to that blue. Um, so a real trick, a real easy trick for this is going to be switch to this, oops, switch the fill to a gradient. Um, and then I'm going to just sample that side of the orange. And then I'll come over here <clears throat> and we'll sample that side right there. And then we'll take the gradient tool and I'll probably get it wrong. Oh no, I got it right. Um, and we'll just apply that um, transform right there. The differences here, it looks like they do go into a slight, let's see, it looks like this purple comes in a little bit further here and the orange comes in a little bit more there. And then they might have actually gone in and um, added more of a fuchsia color there in the middle. Um, so I can adjust some of these a little bit. Um, I'd say that's pretty close. Um, so I'm going to, I, I mean, I'm happy with that. Um, so, um, I'll do that. And then we've got some text here. So let's go ahead and get this text solved. Um, creative, <laughs> cool slogan here. Um, and then um, one of the nice things about kind of Illustrator is being able to zoom through and look at a bunch of text. So let me bump this font up to about the right size. 
um, and then reposition my camera too so I can see better. Um, we'll use the eyedropper tool to sample that color right there. Um, and then I'm going to put this right here. The other thing we need to do, paragraph, actually, sorry, character. Um, and we'll crank up the spacing between the letters, which I think is this one. I always get them confused. Yeah, there we go. So we'll crank that up, and then we'll kind of look for something that looks about the same. So, um, so we're looking for a sans serif font, font that doesn't have the serifs. Um, a C is the first thing that I'm going to be looking for to make sure that that C is kind of close to um, close to around like the C was in the uh, in the actual logo itself. Um, and I'm not looking for perfect here. Don't worry too much if you can't find an exact match. Um, that's fairly close. I wouldn't be mad at that. Uh, the R shape is different in this font. Um, I'm going to keep scrolling here. Different R. Yeah, I could do this for probably 30 minutes, but um, you guys probably don't want to watch that. So I'll find one that's pretty close and we'll just jam on from here. I'll do it by myself, actually. I'll be right back. Okay, I think I actually found the font they used. Um, so it looks like that's a little bit smaller than this. So if I crank this font size down a tiny bit, and the E's are pretty easy to tell if you've got the right height. The V matches, the I matches, the T matches, the A matches, the E matches, the R matches, and the C matches. So I think this is literally the same font I used, which in my case was Montserrat. Um, let's go ahead and crank the letter spacing up. Um, I'll just hold down the arrow key and we'll do this until it looks right, which is right there. <laughs> yeah, I probably got the exact same font they had. Um, and then I'll just nudge this into position. Um, and then um, we'll get our cool slogan, bro. Our cool logo. Cool slogan? Cool slogan here. Um, sample same color. Looks like the font size is way down on that. Did they change anything else? Oh, I thought I didn't hit resume on the thing. Okay. Yeah, looks like they kept that the exact same too. So, um, what is this, 18 minutes? Um, the font font search did not take longer than like three minutes. I was, I don't even think it took two minutes. Um, it was pretty quick going down there. So, a um, couple minutes, and I've duplicated that logo. So, what I want you guys to do is um, kind of repeat the same process. But um, let me load up InDesign first, and we'll switch over there, and I'll show you how to close this or finish this project out. All right, so um, what you guys are going to do is you're going to take what you've created, and you're going to put it in InDesign, but I want it in a specific way. So, I'm going to start a new letter um, formatted document here in InDesign, and it's going to do its thing. Um, so if you're lucky, you'll be able to copy and paste this, um, the source logo that you used into InDesign. And then I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. It doesn't need to be giant, it just needs to kind of fit on the page here. Um, and then once it's there, um, I'll go ahead and delete this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize this uh, sheet. So I don't want a whole bunch of extra space going on around this logo. So um, I unfortunately cannot see it. Um, and now I'm lost. So file document setup, edit artboards, and then I'm just going to kind of shrink this extra white space around. Like I said, I don't want a whole bunch of extra whatever going on. Um, so I'm going to put that right about right there. Um, that's going to work for me. Um, so then I'll go ahead and save this and I'll be right back. Actually, no, you know what? Um, I need to show you guys file management stuff. We were doing that this year. So um, here in my class folder, I have a milestone two folder. I have a demo folder, which is what I'm doing right now. Um, and so I'm going to save um, this in here as a demo file. So, oh, save it as untitled. Oops, forgot to rename it. Um, so it's called this demo uh, logo. Don't. I might have you guys change the name. Don't call it that. Um, I'm calling it that, though, because I can get away with it. 
teacher privilege. All right, so um, I've got the demo logo file right there. Um, I've got the actual image that I used as a source over here in InDesign. So then I'm going to, let me save my InDesign file in that same folder. So milestone to demo, um, and we'll call this uh, uh, presentation. Again, don't copy my file names. I'm gonna give you guys something different to use for the actual file names. Um, so I've got the presentation there, and now I can come back to, oh, did I really just, oh, it was never open. Um, oops. Um, let's go here, milestone two, demo. Um, so then I'll drag my demo logo from here into here, and if I click, it should come in right about there. Um, I'm going to actually go back and now I'm going to resize this a little bit so that they're the same size. I'm going to use those uh, reference. Actually, no, these are different sizes if I use the reference. That looks about... Just trying to get it about the same size. Um, oh, you know what? I didn't have you guys do yet, though. Um, is the thing I keep telling you. So if you have, in the process of working on this, left a bunch of... Um, if your logo incorporated a bunch of strokes, now would be a good, great time to go back to your logo. Um, and if you have those strokes, you would do object, path, outline, stroke in order to set them so that they don't change their size. And then if you have text in your logo, you're also going to want to create outlines. So if you do have to make those changes, which most of you probably just had to do, I did, um, go ahead and save that. And um, it should update itself here in InDesign. Um, that's what this little thing is. So I would click to update, and it's going to redraw that slightly. Um, and I'm going to resize this box. Oops. Um, oh, no, that's fine. That's what it's supposed to do. OK. Um, all right, so I have my logos. I have the, actually, let me switch these. So I've got the original on top. I've got the one I drew on the bottom. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab a text tool and let's label this. So I'm going to put a label right here. We're going to call this the original logo. And then we will just, I'm just going to hold down alt, click and drag. That'll do a move copy. And I'm going to call this copy logo. Um, so very quickly, um, just label these out. Um, if you want to get a little bit fancier, something that you can do is take one of the rectangle tools. Um, if you set it to default there, change the fill to white. Actually, sorry, change the fill to black. And no stroke. You can get a little fancier here, throw that in. Um, I'll bump it back so it's behind the text. I did that with the keyboard that time. Um, and then we'll set the text fill to white. Um, oops. Oh, right. InDesign. Uh, set the text color to white. And we'll kind of just center that right there. Um, so this gives you like slightly fancier way to show off your labels. Um, so if I was going to do that, I would actually just, again, I would do another move copy so I don't have to repeat those steps. It's all about saving yourself time. Um, oops. Whoa. <laughs> mm -hmm. That shot off the page there. OK. And then this will be my copied logo. And then just to make it so that those boxes don't look weird, I'm going to just drag them out to right there. Um, so. Um, that's what the final result would look like. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. I have no problems with it. Um, don't obsess over 100% replicating the logo. What I'm looking for is a clean logo. Um, and what I talk about that, I mean, I don't have a whole bunch of extra crazy shapes going on. Um, I don't have, like, it's not messy. I don't see, like, 400 little, like, points like that. Um, one of the things that, again, I kind of had you guys do when you were uh, going through the demo um, is I was telling you guys, make sure if you're using the pen tool, you're kind of doing a follow. But if you do a whole bunch of points, like if I'm trying to copy an arc, um, 
you know, you can do a whole bunch of points like that trying to copy the arc, but you'd probably come out with something much cleaner if you did something like that, right? So try and keep the number of points that you use down to a minimum. Um, that's kind of the goal anytime you're doing something here in Illustrator. So um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this demo video up. Um, while you guys are working on your logos, flag me down if you think you have one. Um, and just run it by me if you think it's too hard. If I, if I might think it's too hard for you guys to do. Um, similarly, if you have any questions about what tools I would recommend um, besides Pen Tool, um, I could probably give you guys some suggestions. Uh, but uh, this is kind of what I, this is basically what I want to see for the result for your milestone this week. Um, it'll probably take you guys a bit longer than it took me. Um, especially finding a logo. I know a lot of, don't stress about finding a logo. Just find a logo that isn't super boring or super complex and work with that. Um, all right, see you guys in class.